Good morning and greetings. As a military chaplain, I am often asked to be part of required trainings for service members who have returned from a deployment and are now home. As I meet and I talk with them, I ask them a few questions, varying from how is your tour to how is your family, and also I ask them one final question, are you home yet? That last question often takes them by surprise but they quickly understand what I mean. Are you home yet? Are you home yet means to be at home in body, yes, but it also means to be at home in mind and spirit as well. It's something completely else, something completely different. For some, it's waking up one morning realizing they didn't immediately reach for their weapon next to their bed as they did every morning when they were deployed. For others, it's realizing that being alone in the car isn't a strange or weird feeling. For others, it's realizing that it no longer feels wrong to walk outside without putting your cover on. For others, it's being touched without startling, loud noises without a sense of panic, walking in a crowd without feeling threatened. That scene in The Hurt Locker when he's standing in the grocery store, looking at all of the options, marveling at the cleanliness of the place. He's stunned and overwhelmed by all the choices, by the sterility of the place, by the quiet. It's all too true. So I tell service members, I gently remind them that coming home is a process. Coming home takes time in body, mind, and spirit. I reassure them that for every day that they were deployed is often the numbers of days that it requires to truly come home. The Army pushed a great training a few years ago called Battle Mind, with each letter referring to a different military skill. These skills are such as accountability, targeted aggression, tactical awareness, being lethally armed, etc. They all translate directly to survival, the very survival of themselves, their team, their mission, when deployed for many service members. The more effective a service member is at adapting to a dynamic environment, the better the chances the mission to be successful and unnecessary loss of life and property. In coming home, we ask our service members, our warriors, we ask them to put aside these skills that have become hardwired into the very nerves of their existence, into their reflex flexes and their thought patterns. Our warriors are trained to react with decisive action, with little reprieve or rest. And this often challenges service members when they come home and have to adapt to civilian life. Accountability and personnel accountability translates to becoming too controlling at home. Targeted aggression becomes unnecessarily violence. Targeted aggression becomes unnecessary violence toward innocent friends and family members. Tactical awareness becomes hypervigilance. Lethally armed downrange becomes remaining locked and loaded or always armed even at home or in the car. It takes time for these survival skills to be replaced with the assurance that home is a safe place. For some, this can take weeks or months, for others, years. With this in mind, I often get the question, why do you serve? It's a great question and a completely understandable one. I am a lifelong UU. I hold progressive and liberal values. I am a female in a male-dominated chaplain corps, and I am a person of color. The question that comes back to me in response over and over again in my mind is this, if not me, then who? If not me, then who? I take it as my responsibility and privilege to advocate for and to serve soldiers. This calling, 
this calling to serve and to bind up the wounds of the wounded in body, mind, and spirit, this calling is seared on my heart. Many you use that have served may feel similarly. We choose to raise our hand and to serve our communities, regardless of the struggles and hardships, regardless of the sacrifices. Bishop Desmond Tutu wrote, do your little bit of good where you are. It's those bits of good put together that overwhelm the world. As we look to ways to honor the service of our fellow congregants and those in our communities in little and expansive ways, we are called to be a safe place, a haven for those who carry memories of service with them. We are called to open our hearts and our congregations in love and acceptance. Last month, I had the opportunity to meet Kristen Beck, the author of Warrior Princess, which details her journey from being a U.S. Navy SEAL to coming out as transgender. As she shared her amazing and inspiring story with us, she also encouraged us to give back and support. Kristen reminded us that when you see an older person, an older gentleman wearing one of those service caps, covered in, in pins, from his service during Vietnam, Korea, World War I, World War II, go up to them and thank them for their service. That gentleman is wearing that cap for a reason. They're most likely proud of their service and sacrifice. As a nation, we are responsible to demonstrate with love and compassion our utmost gratitude. May I offer my thanks to our service members out there and their families that also serve. Happy Veterans Day. Know this day that you are loved and appreciated. Know that the seeds of peace are planted in our hearts and congregations. May there be peace on earth and may it begin with us.